Hello and welcome to the Pork and Knuckle Show, where we take a bite out of movies. Like, literally. And oh boy, did we do that. But for today's segment, we're going to talk about the Home Alone knockoffs. And what better film to start off this discussion than the French film Deadly Games, aka 3615 Code Père Noël, which is so much of a ripoff of Home Alone that it was released one year prior. But actually, the producers of um, 3615 actually sued the producers of Home Alone for infringing their ideas. Really? Which I find massively entertaining, given that the first 30 seconds of this film feature a let's call it less than stellar reimagination of the eye of the tiger from oh Rocky God. IV. Sorry. This is what, what, what was I going watching? on in that? I don't... <laughs> Oh God, oh but God. Let's start with you. What did you think of Deadly Games? What? It's a very sinister movie. <laughs> yes. Kid lives in a castle. Some computer genius. And what is this situation? Rocky? Home Alone? Or Rambo? Rambo. Like, what's going on here? This is, this is what, you know, the, the first thing that popped into my mind when I started watching the film was, am I watching a Dutch movie like The Flutters or The New Kids because of this mullet? This, oh God, this the kid, haircut. the haircut, this is, I mean, I am not someone to talk to when it comes to great haircuts, but this, but this is, is a different luck. Level. This is the worst haircut that has ever been to film. Full stop. Okay, apart maybe from um, from John Travolta's wig in later okay, movies, but this is terrible. And the kid, actually, did you know the kid only starred in three things in his entire career? Apart from this film, he was in the film Le Passage um, alongside Alain Delon, okay. who also wrote the film, and one episode of a TV series. That's it. That's it. That's it. And I think. <clears throat> he did a phenomenal job acting in this film. Must, was really good. I, I loved it, and and what Could I loved the bad. what I loved the most about this film is it is a French film. It has such a tremendously weird atmosphere when it comes to the music and it's the slow weird. motion and the scenes when 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 uh, Santa Claus sometimes walks around the house. It is so. What am I watching now? Did Dario Argento make parts of this movie? Santa kicked a dog and killed him. Yes. In a Why movie. not this dog in the first five minutes of the film? Seriously. It was just like, come on, they live in a castle, got secret rooms. And the kid ends up what? Saving his grandfather by getting insulin, tries to gas. The Santa. Yeah, he tries to f f murder him. <laughs> and then it's like, so the gate is metal, but Santa somehow has the strength to push it open, and the handle breaks off. I'm just like, this is, there's something wrong with you that. Know, you know what this, this film reminds me of in very many instances, like a very early video game. Like, like the pit boy he is holding on his wrist. Yeah. He is, he is like uh, Sam Fisher when he splinter sells his way around the castle. It's weird, to say the least. But I have to say, and I have to spoil this, out of all the movies that we watched for this entire month, this is my personal favorite. I loved this film to death. Because of the weird atmosphere, because of the weird characters, because of the terrible haircuts, this is a brilliant, unique film like you have never seen any other film before. It's so unique for sure. If you have any chance, check this one out. This is... I have nothing to say. It's, it's an eight-year-old John Rambo dressed yeah. up with the camouflage like Arnold Schwarzenegger at the end of Commando going commando on Completely Santa mental. Claus. <laughs> you, you, know, you know what? This kid, this kid is the young French equivalent of John Wick. Really? You killed my dog. Now I'm going to kill you. This is I don't insane. get one thing. When he was escaping from the Santa, 
He was outside. It's snowing, but he's sweating. And he's just like, how is that working? He has... Well, how? Have you ever been chased by Santa Claus? No, so you cannot say that whether you would be sweating or not. But I actually, after after this kid is barefoot in almost all of the film, I was like, I was getting die hard flashbacks at some point. And I was thinking, this was a tremendous effort by the actor and I love him for that awesome film. And right now, because we don't have all that much time today, I would like to move on to another film that we watched, um, which is so much of a Home Alone knockoff that originally Macaulay Culkin was to star really? in this film, but then they decided, no, they do not want to typecast him this much, so uh, they gave the part to a different kid, and um, this is Problem Child, oh, which God. also has very, very, very interesting people behind it. It was directed by Dennis Duggan, who you might know as the um, inspired director of classics such as Happy Gilmore, Big Daddy, and Beverly Hills Ninja, who um, ended his career, and I hope he ended his career, <laughs> directing shit, and I have to use this word here, like Grown Ups, Just Go With It, and Jack and Jill, where Adam Sandler plays himself and his sister. The most insane waste of human resources But we're not talking about that, we're talking about Problem film. Child. I know, but I hate this film so goddamn much! Problem Child started as the story of Moses. What is going on? <laughs> With the kid wait, in a wait, basket. The kid what? in a basket, and then somebody rescues him, and then God, I goes love around, that. goes around, goes around, goes around, I until he meets that. the nuns. I love that. What is going on? Heart. It's like this kid, because he's so mean. He, every time he comes to a different foster family, they like handle him for a, a second and put him away again. I love this. I love how mean-spirited and god-awfully bad this movie's characters are. They were no good. It was, uh, what was it? When Big Ben gave him a dollar and he said, manage that. And the cheek of the kid, which is fair enough, is like, how do you manage a dollar? <laughs> <laughs> it's a dollar. Yeah. What do try you do try not to spend everything yeah. at once. But the thing is, I love the cast of, of Problem Child. I love Gilbert Gottfried, who is an amazing voice, Excellent. an amazing actor, but the person I enjoyed seeing in this film the most was Michael Richards. He was, for me, the star of Seinfeld. He is a comedic genius. His timing and is good. He has the best timing. I love it how he has this this shaky moves like French Stewart, who we are going to talk about as well in the Home Alone films. But he is a god, and he made, you know, out of I have to spoil this out of all the films that we watched for this month, including the Home Alone movies, Michael Richards made me laugh the most, with the iconic scene at the end at the at the carnival. And oh, they're, they're chasing each other, they're running around, and some, somehow a clown pops up, folds a giraffe out of a balloon, holds it in his face, and says, that's a giraffe! And he's like, that's a fast poof! <laughs> and I, I almost fell over crying. That was terrible. Oh, that this was, movie was terrible. so great. It wasn't as bad as Problem Child 2. I think that was <laughs> a really, really poor movie. Problem Child 1 you could get away with, Problem Child 2 no chance. I mean, we no. all established that the kid has anger issues. And then they introduce this love story situation going on. Ugh. And then the kid finds another girl that's equally problematic. And then the parents somehow fall in love. It's just like, come on. No. This, this is, I want chaos. I don't want a happy ending. The thing is that the two writers, Alexander and Larry uh, Karaszewski, they never liked the first movie. They called it disastrous, and because they had so little respect for their own work, studios were very reluctant to, to hire them for future projects. And even, um, according to Dennis Duggan, the test screenings were so disastrous that 70% of the audience walked out of the film, and so well, they had to reshoot big parts of the film. And for the second part, Gilbert Gottfried um, revealed in 2014 
um, for that matter, that the, the second part initially received an R rating from the MPAA really? because it's so vulgar. I mean, remember yeah, the yeah, puking yeah, scene yeah, only God. surpassed by, by Team America World Police. And they only had to edit out one part. They had to ad-lib a part where Junior used the term pussy whipped. I think he was referring to a cat. I have yeah. no idea. Um, but after editing this out, they got the PG-13. But let's put it like that. The second one was garbage. Terrible. I, I would have... No, there was one part. One part Which of the part? second movie that I loved. It was when Gilbert Gottfried, who is a god and who loves to improvise so much so that Dennis Duggan uh, got Which flagged part? from the producers of the first one because he shot so much footage. The first part when he uh, met the kid again yes. and he was like... And he made the Kevin face in this Kevin knockoff, which is... God, this is funny. Yeah. Let's move on. Yes. Let's move on. Let's right. move on uh, to another movie I've selected because it's kind of serious. You know that there is a fan theory that Kevin from the Home Alone movies in later years turned out to be the Jigsaw killers, uh, killer of the Saw movies. Okay. Because he was so evil. And Fine. then a few years later he met the film The Good Son uh, alongside a brilliant and very young Elijah Wood <sighs> where it is... A mixture between Home Alone Kevin and John Kramer from Saw. The quicker we move on from this movie, the better it is. Okay, I kind of liked it. Yes, sadly. Sadly. This... I... no. Sorry? I mean, it, it was rubbish. It was it was insane. The, the, the sheer amount of, of vileness that this character has. Even Zac Efron as Ted Bundy wasn't this shockingly evil and vile as no, as uh, I, I didn't like that movie. Macaulay Culkin in this film I I still think it's it's kind of an interesting thriller especially since it was directed um, by Joseph Rubin who we know from films such as Dreamscape uh, Sleeping with the Enemy with I think Julia Roberts in it and of uh, the stepfather with a brilliant Terry O'Quinn as a killer a uh, franchise will be spotlighting sometimes right, along the, the line the last one this and is last the one but I'm looking least, forward to Really? So please, take it. It's right. yours. Yeah, that's all we have to say about this movie. It is superb. <laughs> Bone is superb. <laughs> it is such a cool movie. Right, thieves straight away. You've got the dogs. No one believes the dogs. One of the dog loses the bite. They're in the shelter. My god, that shelter was slightly like... <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's what's what's going on that shelter, shelter was like here it's a dog shelter yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what but, but I liked one of his jokes <laughs> at the start it was just like oh I'm really in the dog house now I was just like ha oh, ha oh, that's quite funny that was quite funny um, it was a terrible attempt at Santa it was the whole movie was like the dog was basically Kevin yeah but they got the wrong dog yeah did you get the pun, bone alone, because it was so subtle? Yes, you know, Jesus. Bone alone. And you know what's the, the, the funniest part about this is? This dog here, on the front cover the of uh, the Blu-ray of Bone Alone, this is not Bone! This is the other dog! There are two dogs in the movie, one is called Bone, and one is this dog. I wasn't satisfied with the ending. <laughs> I wasn't satisfied with the ending. Who? <laughs> Yeah. First, who just walks around? Why weren't like you that? satisfied with the ending? Oh yeah, because the dogs end up on kebabs. They turned out to be Santa Claus grandparents, and you're just like, right, this is too. Yeah. Nah, you not know, for me. It was not a good ending. You know what I like to do? Uh, before I watch a movie, I never watch trailers, I no, never no. read uh, the content on the I back of the it. box. So I had no clue what I was walking into, and then, after one minute of film, no, the dogs started ever... talking! The dogs yes. started talking! Even but with Obviously, the dog poorly, will talk if the dog is on the with title. With poorly CGI'd... Mm, Human okay. mouths moving. The computer graphic effects were not very good. They were poor. It's they the were asylum. Really, really bad. Yeah. 
for, for some parts of the movie I had the feeling that it just filmed dogs, filmed random shots, and then ad-libbed over this, so we have a movie now. I didn't quite get why this kid had a phone, and he's constantly on the phone, and his biggest problem was, oh, my battery died. I'm just like, what are you talking about? You're maybe eight, nine years old? Why do you have a phone? You know what I didn't get? Why was Kevin Sorbo in this film? He is a respectable actor. He was Hercules. He was an Andromeda. He is actually, and I met Kevin Sorbo in person, and his wife, and his kids. They are a tremendously nice family. He's an incredible person to talk to. On my channel, you can even find the panels, uh, panel discussions that I did with him. But funny thing, there was, I promise you, right, there is one, one, last bit, fight and then... one bit of trivia uh, that I found out just today after watching the film um bone alone was directed by joseph j lawson okay yes the director and you will not get this of lord of the elves <laughs> right that's so, it. i think that's our cue in, that's in our cue first, in the first two months of this show we had two asylum productions both by the same director both were We're utterly done. garbage so We're please done. If you have spare time, watch Deadly Games, Problem Child, and The Good Son. Don't watch this with the wrong dog. <laughs> right. See you next week, guys. Subscribe, week. Like, like, leave a comment. Let us know which one is the worst one. You. <laughs> Done.